Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I'm gonna show you a very quick and easy five-step process that I normally do to create concepts like this. Let's check it out. All right, guys, so before I start, uh, I wanna let you know that this, uh, this five-step uh, process that I'm gonna show you is part of a bigger, uh, much more condensed uh, tutorial that I just released for this sort of concepts. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna go and guide you through like the whole process of it. There's going to be about a little bit over three hours of content of me narrating my whole process of, you know, from start to finish. And so if you're interested in that, you can head out to my R station to check it out. The 3D kit is actually included in the files, so you will have access to the actual 3Ds and also the Photoshop's and of course the video tutorials as well. So if you want to have a more in-depth version of this, uh, feel free to check it out. Okay, so the first step is going to be the sketch. Now, uh, this is very important and it really doesn't really matter the way you do this, like what software or what um, you know tools that you use for this. The main thing about this and the way I look at it is that this is the time for you to sort of trying to put as quickly as possible visually what you have in your mind and sort of trying to figure out sort of like the main critical components of what the concept is going to be. And, you know, this process is very important because, uh, you know, it helps you sort of define what the idea is going to be. And so this helps me to sort of have a better, a better understanding uh, visually of what I'm going to do uh, in the next couple of steps. Now you could do this again in many different ways. You know, I've, I've, I've sketched in VR, I've sketched in 3D, I've sketched in pen and paper or Photoshop, whatever the case may be. I think the important part is to have a clear goal of what you're trying to accomplish and sort of uh, trying to put that visually so you can use that as a reference as you keep moving forward in the project. Now, the way I'm doing this is I'm just using a couple very simple brushes and sort of playing around uh, with very simple values. I don't wanna go too crazy with the details or trying to figure out exactly what the design is going to be uh, because I, I want to leave space for that as I'm doing the 3D part of this. And so the general idea is just to have some sort of, sort of like a, cabin in the hills type of thing. Um, I'm, I'm building this kit for sort of like a inspired by sort of like Vikings and, and meadows and, uh, you know, the integration of nature with the building as well. And so I, I'm, I'm imagining that this building is going to be sort of like on top of a hill type thing. And, you know, you might not be able to see that uh, uh, in, in clarity in the final concept, uh, but those, that's sort of what I'm thinking. Uh, for this sort of uh, sketch and concept here. Now, one of the ways that I start right after I have the sketch is to actually go off a main texture. And I like to have sort of like one to three main textures that I'm gonna be using for the kit that I'm gonna build. And so sometimes, you know, there's a couple of ways that you could do this. And in the in the more extensive tutorial, uh, I explain a couple of ways that you can do this. But uh, this time I started with a sort of creating a texture here using Quixel Mixer. And so Quixel is a great tool that, you know, gives you access to a lot of textures that uh, that you can sort of combine and edit and and sort of make your own. And so I sort of wanted to create a sort of like my main texture that I'm going to be using for most of the pieces. And in this case, going to be sort of like what the wood of this is going to look like. Right. And so once I define that, then I can use this to create uh, a bunch of different pieces. But I want to make sure that I that I sort of keep using the same texture with the majority of the pieces. That way I can sort of keep the same consistency of the textures and the way it looks and and all that sort of thing so you can spend a lot of time a lot of time trying to figure this part out so uh, i encourage you to 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 figure that out first and then using this to create a couple pieces 
So that will be the step number two, creating the texture. Now, again, you could make this in a couple of different ways. Uh, this is just one of the ways to do it. Another way is to actually create maybe some sort of collage of, of a couple of pictures that maybe you took or that you downloaded from the internet uh, that gives you sort of like the feel and texture of what you're trying to get for your concepts. And so I think there is a couple of uh, very uh, creative ways that you could do this, but I think Quixel is a pretty powerful tool. So uh, I normally use this at first and then I go from there. Now, once you have the texture, and this will be step number three, uh, once you have that texture, now you can get really creative and start creating a bunch of different assets, right? So in this case, I have, you know, two different types of textures. So I have the sort of stone texture and I have the sort of wood texture in here. And from here, I can use Blender and import that as a plane and start you know, extruding things out, uh, editing them out, you know, cutting and replacing and moving things around to create a bunch of other different types of textures. And so uh, I want you to try and, and use this as much as you can in as many different ways as you can. And, you know, you will be so surprised on, on how many pieces you can get from one single texture, right? So here you can see me that that I build, you know, columns, I build, you know, wall partitions, I, I combine two of these to create something different. And so you can see that I can create three, four, five, six, seven different assets from just one picture of texture. And imagine if I have, you know, two, three, four different textures, then I can get really uh, more into it and create even more pieces uh, that I can use uh, for my for my 3D kit. And so so I want you to uh, I, I like keeping myself pretty tight at the beginning of this because I want to uh, take as much as I can from my main texture. But then from then I can branch out and create a couple of secondary textures that I can create a couple more pieces uh, just to bring a little bit of variety into my kits. Now, step number four, now I'm going to start actually building the building concept here. Now, using the texture that I already have, right, and uh, starting out very, very simple to, uh, to sort of block out the main shape of my building. Uh, you can see that I have a little sketch here on the side here that I'm going to use as uh, sort of like a reference part of it. Uh, and this is a great way to to have it in case you don't have like a second monitor, you can actually import it into Blender directly. And so you can use it as a reference to uh, help you, you know, build this this building. And, you know, in, in my head, I wanted this building to be some sort of like storage unit. And so it's not going to be some, it's not going to be a living quarter. So I wanted to be, I wanted it to be sort of like open in the front and I wanted to have this sort of grass uh, meadow sort of like going over it. And the way, the reason why I wanted to do that is because I wanted to have some sort of contrast between the organic part of the grass and the nature part of it against the, you know, the, the rustic part of the building with the wood and all the things that I'm going to have in there. And so you're going to see me here that I'm sort of, sort of blocking out the shape of it. And my main concern here that I want to tackle at, as fast as possible, it will be the sort of the main sort of ratio of scale with a human and sort of the main shape of the of the building itself, because once I have that, then it will be a matter of really just using the pieces from the kit and sort of filling out the space as you're going to see on, on the video here. Um, and so, so once I have that, then I can start, you know, adding texture and adding some of the pieces and I'm sort of thinking how this place could be constructed in a way. And so I'm trying to think as much as I can in the functionality of the pieces that I'm putting. I'm just not putting pieces just because they might look cool or 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 not. Uh, I'm also thinking of the function of this. So you know what sort of support the ceiling has and the walls and and that sort of thing. So I'm I'm trying to think about that as much as I can. 
And that way, I think the the concept uh, once you finish is going to be a little bit more believable and relatable uh, because he has that sort of functionality in mind. And when people look at it, you know, they can actually uh, feel that it actually works because it is it's being built in a way that that is believable. And so once you have a kid, then, you know, it will be a matter of, of, of using all these pieces and sort of putting them together and, and trying, you know, different places and, and edit them in a way that uh, maybe you can sort of uh, dress this, this concept with the pieces that you already have. And so that will be step uh, number four to build these, uh, using the kit to build the actual, the actual concept. Now, step number five, then it will be just taking the actual render of the building. And then I'm just gonna take it into Photoshop and then just finish it up. Now, once I get the render, you know, I, I have render passes. I have, uh, I'm gonna use a couple of uh, images and pictures to, to bring a little bit of texture to my concept here. And uh, this is sort of like the fun part, you know, I can put some music on. And uh, one of the things that I wanna take care of at first, it will be sort of, uh, sort of like to separate the building from the background and have the general shape silhouette of the actual concept. And then from there, then I can start adding, you know, photos and painting and, and breaking up the concept a little bit and make it a little bit more relatable uh, with the textures and the painter and the painterly effect and all that. And so I'm going to be using a couple of techniques here. You know, there's I've done a couple of videos of how I use render passes uh, that you can check it out. Um, but I, I'm going to be using render passes at the, at the beginning and then going ahead and painting and using pictures to bring a little bit of texture and painting over the model uh, to bring a little bit of that brushy texture and, and effects here. And so um, I, I usually go back and forth between techniques, right? And so, um, you know, from using render passes to painting to using photo bash or, or matte painting techniques. And so uh, it, it's sort of like a very organic process. Uh, there's really not a, uh, a, a static uh, steps that I take when I'm in this stage. And so uh, this is normally, you know, me having fun and trying different things and, and painting and erasing and, and checking it out and, and then trying to see what's going to work or not. But my main goal here is to break up a little bit of that 3D feel to it and bring in a little bit more texture and, and mood to the concept. Uh, even though this is a very simple concept, there's no, there's really not a huge background to this or anything like that. Uh, but I still want to break up a little bit of that of that 3D uh, in here just for presentation purposes, because I, I think um, that from the 3D render to the final concept piece, I don't think there is really not much more that it says from each other. It's not that much difference. Uh, you know, the, the idea of the concept is still the same, but the presentation of it is uh, completely uh, is, is way more different than, than the idea itself. So uh, this is more for presentation purposes and then and, and showing uh, as close as possible, how is it going to look like? Uh, in terms of the, the mood and the textures and, and all that. So it's really important in that sense. Um, so, uh, but you have to be careful on, you know, how much time you spend here because, uh, you know, you could spend, uh, let's say you spend an hour and you get to a spot where if you spend 20 more hours, there's really not that much of a difference. Uh, unless you do some really big changes on the design or anything like that. Uh, but in terms of rendering, there's really not that much difference. And it, you're still saying the same thing with your piece. So you have to be a little bit of aware of, of where that stopping point is. And so um, it, it could be a little bit tricky. But, you know, the, the, the you know this is to have fun and, and trying a couple of different techniques and all that and, and sort of how to mix, you know, pictures with... Uh, brushes and, and and other techniques so you can get to your final concept but that's that's really about it um, uh, here you can see the final sort of uh, results for this from the render to the final painting 
All right, guys, so that's it for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope that you guys learned something. Again, if you're interested in the more extensive tutorial, it includes the 3D kit, the video tutorials with over three hours of content, and also the Photoshop file as well. Uh, you can check that out on my website. Feel free to check it out. I'll see you guys in the next one.